I think I think I'm probably uh, probably probably coming from quite a different perspective uh, in some ways from the other presentations and talks today. Um, uh, there's there's this ten year um, period in a dyslexic's life quite often where they um, they go to school and they have all of this focus if they're identified as dyslexic. Um, and then maybe they'll do a bit of college and then they get to 21, maybe. And then in a way, that's the end of their, their dyslexia. Um, luckily, they will have been identified and cured with some magic pill of some kind, no doubt. Um, I, I didn't really have a choice. Um, I, I know a lot of dyslexics who kind of have a choice. Um, they don't have to tell people they're dyslexic. And the reason they don't have to is because they can pass. They can exist in the world, they can present themselves in a way which allows them not to have to identify themselves um, and that's the way they kind of go about their lives. I, on the other hand, um, I've had a different experience to that. Um, and it's, it, it's, it's had quite a dramatic effect on my life. Um, I think uh, I went into a special educational unit when I was nine years old. Um, and I was in that until I was 16. And when I left that unit after seven years of specialist educational tuition, um, I was illiterate. So it's in, it's, uh, oh, this mic has been famously inconsistent all day. Um, so I'll just sort of shout and uh, it sounds really interesting and you're, you're at the back. There's plenty of seats up here, isn't there? Um, so most, so, so one of the things I kind of had to kind of, I, I've had to kind of get my head around over the last sort of 30, 30 40 years is um, what, what kind of dyslexic am I? Um, and what's that mean? Um, and, 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 and how am I going to, how am I going to exist in the world? Um, uh, and I think some of you probably kind of guessed from this kind of this, this, this title, 3D thinkers in a 2D world, that, that maybe, maybe I think I'm a 3D thinker and I'm living in a, in a 2D world. Um, it's, a good, it's a good assumption. Um, and the, the, world's, the world is very, very concerned about what's happening now. Culture is always really, really obsessed with what's happening in the moment. Um, and what's happening in the moment is that we're all reading and writing to navigate in our first world experience. Um, but we know that the way that our brains function, the way that they work, has something to do with inherited qualities. So what's interesting is that we know for 30,000 years, at least, humans have been drawing pictures have been using that part of their brain. And they've had to, for you know, hundreds of thousands of years, navigate space and remember where things are. These are really, really useful skills, which seem to be hardwired and learnt, and are there in us. Um, reading is kind of, for the, for the, for the majority, it's really only been around 150 years, you know. So you're kind of looking at, it's, it's a really new thing. It's a really, and it's actually a really hard thing for all brains to learn how to do. So a lot of people forget about all of that stuff and just kind of are presented with this idea that some people maybe are, just, just have a lack. Um, and this causes them to be bad at reading and writing. Um, the interesting thing about dyslexia is, 
to me anyway, is it's not about reading and writing. That's not what dyslexia is about. Um, if it was, there wouldn't be any Italian dyslexics. Well, there kind of aren't. So in countries where there are phonetic languages, I don't know if you've ever asked yourself that question, but in countries where they have a phonetic language, um, reading and writing doesn't create a barrier in the same way that it does in English. English is one of the hardest languages to grasp from a starting point for anyone. So it's kind of part of the, part of the makeup. Um, so my, my, my day job is an artist, um, and I do a lot of different things. I'm not very good at nailing myself down. Um, I'm, a, I'm a real kind of odd job man. I'm also extraordinarily stubborn, um, and nearly everything I do involves reading and writing, all the time. I'm constantly having to engage with reading and writing. I graduated at the age of 21, and I learned how to spell my middle name when I was 27. Okay. Um, so there is, so, so it's the kind of, the way that we think about the experience of dyslexia creates, I think, a set of sort of expectations. Um, and these, these are to do with a long history of, of people who, who write and read as being intelligent and people who do and make as less intelligent. Okay? These Cliches are very hardwired in our society. Um, and these are some of the things I'm going to kind of uh, talk about a little bit. Okay, let's uh, wander into the slideshow. Okay. Ah. So, this is me, about, uh, about 1973, 1974, thereabouts. Um, and I had this. Um, I had this really kind of great, great experience. We've got chairs, so I'll use the chair metaphor. Um, uh, I was fantastic with stuff and space as a small child. I was making things all the time. And, okay, I want everybody to look at this, this object. Um, can we kind of agree that this is a chair? Yeah? yeah? Um, and actually even the, and, and despite the fact that everybody sat in different places in the room, it's still a chair. It's still kind of, in fact, most of you seem to be sat on them. Maybe one person isn't, I don't know. Um, uh, oh, right, okay. So, what is it now? It's, it's still a chair. That's the thing. And actually, yeah, it could be upside down. It, you can see the seat. But, it carries on being a chair. Um, when I was this person here, um, and through our lives, we, we, you know, we, we, we end up being lots of different people, adjusting to lots of different situations. When I was this person, I navigated the world physically, through objects and things. Um, I also spoke a completely invented language, um, which uh, up until about the age of three, uh, would seem